All right, here's the difference between a 60 and a 67 millimeter turbo. These are both on three turbos, both ceramic ball bearing turbos, and you can see the 60 mil, which is this guy. It's just got a smaller in inducer wheel, right? So about seven millimeters smaller than this guy, which, what does that mean? It means this guy's gonna spool just a little bit faster. Uh, and ultimately it's not gonna move quite as much air as this one, but spool time, I'm hoping we have a fairly, I hope we have a fairly significant uh, shortening of our spool time. We don't know, we're gonna find out. That's what this test is about. Regardless of that, both of these turbos are completely adequate for running on this on three kit on this 302 base Ford. Um, this 60 mil turbo will supply enough power to support 600, 650 wheel horsepower. Uh, plenty enough for our application. I'm not making that kind of power. Um, if I was, you know, looking at making 657, 800 horsepower, I definitely have to up my turbo game. But basically the application that I have pretty much stock stuff. You know, I think we're going to be well within the efficiency range of this turbo. Yes, that is a chicken. I have a rooster. His name's Henry. He's very annoying. Um, but I think we're in good shape. So we're going to switch these out. Throw them back into or throw the 60 back into the car. As you can see here, we've got everything taken off, kind of expect, inspecting everything, make sure we're in good shape. And we'll go from there. We'll go do a little test drive, see where we're at, see if we can tell a difference. And I really think we will. I'm, uh, man, that rooster. Well, I spared you guys watching me struggle to put this turbo on. It took pretty much all afternoon. But I got it on. So we are now rolling with a 60 mil. And uh, pretty much looks like it you know exactly what was on there. I'm running the same uh, same size exhaust housing, 0.96 AR exhaust housing. So um, nothing's really changed on the exhaust side. I'm hoping I'm not gonna have uh, a lot of back pressure buildup because I'm using the same housing. 60 mil up here, everything fits almost exactly the same. Went in there, no problem. I took the time, cleaned everything up while I was in there, made sure everything was tight. Uh, checked on my fittings had a little bit of an oil leak on my drain tube you can't really you can't see it down in there but it was just a little bit loose so fix that um, change the oil we're ready to uh, give this thing a test for a startup with the 60 mil right now. Thing sounds okay. Nothing really sounds that different. kill it see if we can fix that it's like the exhaust leaks coming around the down tube flange everything else is pretty tight that's the only thing that I wasn't quite sure that I got perfect perfectly aligned so put a little more snug on that see if that fixes that issue my down pipe was just a little a little off center when I tightened it up but I got a fix out so. Should be good to go. Check all the fluids. Oil looks good. Everything looks good. Make sure we get all pressure. Everything looks good. Let's go for a ride. I 
could definitely tell it is spooling faster than the 67. Absolutely. Absolutely. But I haven't really dig put in a dig yet, so. Wow. Yeah, a whole lot more responsive. instantaneously tell I mean just right off the bat right off the bat I can tell you the spool times faster it's more responsive it feels like it's building more pressure lower rpms um, all right you can see rpms I think you can see the boost gauge up there just doing support gear rolls yeah definitely is coming up on boost much faster like, I'm just barely rolling into fourth there Slow it down and then roll into third. All right, here we go. Full throttle. She's nasty. She's nasty. Yeah, so it comes up on boost. It feels a lot more controllable, which is good. Like, it feels like I can modulate the throttle a little bit better. I'm not, uh, you're not it's not just kicking it in the pants. At full boost, it feels like it, 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 it rolls in a little nicer, so that's definitely a plus. Um, I feel like it is spooling up faster, and I can actually hear the wastegate is different like the wastegate's blowing off not the wastegate, the blow off valve is blowing off air, but it's, it's staying open longer instead of just being one gush of air, like a and it's done, it's blown off. Obviously the turbo's still spooling or it's it's, it's rotating faster because it's still pr producing some boost and blows off longer. So that leads me to believe that, yeah, boost is on tap a lot earlier for sure. manageable than it was before like this is night and day difference night and day difference it is not so violent coming up on boost that you just you know you got to back out of it you can just pull back on the throttle a little bit and let it let it bite and then get back in it I mean I just walked probably a hundred yards of, of spinning tires there at 50 60 miles an hour and felt very controllable so yeah, this is an improvement. this thing has just totally denied the clutch yeah I feel like I just glazed that thing big time so I'm gonna take it home on that note looks like we need more clutch folks and uh, yeah I mean it's blowing through the clutch now it's never done that it's never. I've always been able to throw it third 
and and busted and it and I think it's because it's staying up on boost tire. I mean that's just the only explanation is Alright guys, to wrap this video up, it's going to talk a little bit uh, about how I feel this video went and uh, kind of the conclusion of the 60mm versus 67mm turbo. Um, you could tell by that last uh, a couple of clips there in the car, I'm a huge fan of this 60mm turbo. I think this is the right combination for, for my car. And I imagine if you're building a similar uh, fairly stock setup that this is probably the right turbo for you too, especially in a straight shift car. I think um, there's potential that you might want to step up to a larger size if you're running an automatic and you can really stay in the boost. Um, but in this application, if you're running a straight shift car and you're having to switch gear, you know, bang the gears and you're worried about that fall off and build back up a boost pressure in between your gear shifts, the 60s tip typically takes the timing of that out. Let me say that again. If you're worried about shifting gears and turbo lag in between your gear shifts, I feel like that's one of the biggest advantages of this turbo is that it basically takes that turbo <clears throat> lag away. Um, I did not notice as much fall off and I definitely noticed a lot more responsive, responsiveness in each shift and I think that's due to just a smaller um, that smaller turbo spools and stay spooled much faster uh, and much longer in between your shifts. So that alone is worth it for me. Um, it makes plenty of power. It's still going to provide every bit amount of boost and through the RPM range that I would need. I don't see that I have any loss of upper upper end power. Um, if anything, I think it just um, helps it just maintain more boost throughout the whole RPM range. And that, I mean, that's the best of both worlds um, for this combination. So um, I hope this was in, uh, informative and helpful for anybody that's considering doing one of these turbo kits or an on three turbo kit. Um, I would definitely look into doing the 60 millimeter journal ball bearing uh, turbo um, if you're going to do a fairly stock build with a turbo kit on it. Um, I would, you know, obviously reconsider if I was doing something larger, larger cubic inches or something with a, a more uh, extended uh, rev band on it, a higher RPM band. Uh, you might want to step up to the 67, but I mean, this thing is, it's a beast. Um, all that said, hope you guys are doing well. I hope I can see you at Oktoberfest. If you're coming out, please say hello. Um, and we'll keep doing some more of these videos. All right, guys. See you next time on Southeast Speed Shop.